Do you think political parties should be doing more to win over minority voters? And what do you think is driving this political shift? People see their actual lives. Not only that, I mean, look, I, I think people are really, because again, due to filter bubbles and repeated propaganda, which takes place on both sides. If you're not paying close attention to what's happening in cities like Chicago or New York City when it comes to the migrant crisis and how minority residents of those areas are reacting to it, you're making a huge mistake because they're furious, okay? They are furious. So black and brown voters in Chicago, in New York, they see the crisis, it's at their doorstep. And they're like, I don't understand, this is, this is based on federal policy, why isn't Biden doing anything about it? So when they see their quality of life decline, because suddenly there's a massive influx of people into their city, which they do not have the resources to house, to feed, you know, to keep safe. And when they see the scraps that they're given now being shared with a large you know, migrant population that's come into their city, they start getting angry. Okay, it's not because they're bad people, it's not because they're racist, it's not because they're anti-immigrant. But you tell me if 170,000 people in a few months show up to your front door and suddenly you're seeing encampments all over the place and it seems like chaos outside your front door, how are you gonna feel about it? That's what's happening. What's going on crew? Welcome back to the show that spills the tea on the political drama that's hotter than Big Mama's secret chili recipe. We got the scoop on the shocking poll that's showing that Democrats are actually losing minority support in droves. Don't worry, we're about to get into it. But before we do, I just need to say this, crew, you already know what to do. But if this is your first time here, I'm just gonna ask if you could be ever so kind as to drop a token in the tip cup because your support fuels the journey and I'm grateful for every supporter I have. Now, let's go ahead and get into the show. Another day, another poll showing Democrats losing ground with um, demographics that they typically had widespread support among. Now, a new poll by Gallup shows that Democrats are particularly losing support among black and Hispanic adults. So let's get into the details. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Party's wide lead over Republicans in black Americans party preferences has shrunk by nearly 20 points over the past three years. It this is a good thing. I, I mean, we've been telling you for a long time, black people are not a monolith, right? We have our own minds, we can think independently. Uh, this is not a, the, the a hive mind of groupthink uh, in the black community, no longer. So I'm, I'm not surprised that this poll is out, but let's go ahead and continue. In just three years, although Democrats continue to hold a formidable advantage over Republicans among non-Hispanic black adults in the United States. Their current 47 point lead is the smallest Gallup has recorded in its polling, dating back to 1999. Most of the decline has been recent with the net Democratic ID for this group falling 19 points from a 66 point advantage in 2020. At that time, 77% of black adults favored the Democrats and 11% the Republicans. So the 2023 findings represent an 11 point decrease in Democratic affiliation since 2020 and an eight point increase in Republican affiliation. Mm -hmm. So obviously Democrats still have a significant lead. But it's slipping, it's slowly starting to go away. Our brothers are waking up, uh, sisters are waking up too, we leaving the plantation. Nobody wants to be stuck on a democratic plantation, we leaving. Uh, with black voters compared to Republicans. But still, we're seeing this trend continue where the, 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 voter, the, the voting demographic that Democrats can typically rely on, they're, they're dwindling now and some of them are unaffiliated, they're not really uh, registering as Republicans, others are and registering as Republicans. Now, Democrats lead among Hispanic adults and adults ages 18 to 29 have slid nearly as much as the black vote, resulting in Democrats holding only a modest edge in both of those groups. So as Gallup reports, Democrats 12 point advantage among Hispanic adults in 2023 represents a new low in trends dating back to 2011 when Gallup recorded Democrats having a Write down in the comments, why do you think that is? All right, there's gotta be a reason uh, for it. I mean, I, I have my particular reason, but I, I wanna hear from you. Why do you think that is, you know? A 26 point advantage. In 2021, Democrats actually had a 31 point advantage among Hispanic voters. So this has been an ongoing trend, as I mentioned, Jank. This is something that we've been you know, raising some alarm over. I have a lot of theories as to why this is taking place, but I'm curious what you, th what you think. What do you think is causing this? Yeah, look, for what it's worth, I'm positive. Uh, they're not delivering for the average American. 
There, I solved it. It's so complicated. So that's because they be, uh, they're delivering for the alphabet community, right? Let you have an asterisk beside your agenda. They're delivering for you then. Uh, mainstream media and the people in Washington view things in, in uh, through the lens of race mm -hmm. and culture wars and demographics, etc. So they're like, okay, black people and Latinos are ours, white people are yours, <laughs> women are ours, men are yours, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, the American people are not cooperating with that. <laughs> so. For example, the young voters were massively on the side of Democrats, not even close. That's why uh, Biden won in 2020, and it's they've had a huge lead there, etc. Now uh, they're beginning to lose them. Now, why are they losing them? Because Biden and the Democrats keep doing things that are very, very unpopular with young voters. The most recent one is uh, the situation in Israel, where younger voters hate that we're spending more of our money, which we barely have, to send over to kill more innocent Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So. If I don't know about the whole uh, Palestinian thing. Uh, I mean, I, no one wants war. I know that, right? No one wants war. But uh, we shouldn't be sending our resources over to these un other countries uh, to begin with. I don't really think we need to be involved. Israel is is fully capable of defending itself. And last I checked, uh, Palestine actually, uh, you know, came out, you know, came down in the middle of the night and started murdering innocent women and children, taking hostages and, and so forth. So uh, I don't see what the big deal is with Israel defending itself. Now, I'm not sure of everything that's happening over there on the ground, but I do know that America, you know, we shouldn't be sending any of our resources over there to support what they got going on. They're fully capable of defending themselves. That's just my two cents. That fact bothers you. That's too bad for you. That is a fact. That is why they're leaving uh, Democrats. And so now I've got more on black yeah, I, I have to I have to add to that point because I think it's an important point and there's a second half to it that I think is really, really important to focus on. The Democratic Party in general has increasingly abandoned the working class in America, which is why Republicans have actually increased their support among uh, non college educated working class Americans. And what Democrats have I don't like when they do that uh, non-college educated. It, 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 to me, it, it sounds like it's a um, a downplay for uh, you know brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters who don't have a degree. You know, as if uh, you know their opinion doesn't hold as much weight since you know it's only the non-educated that are going over and leaving the Democratic Party. You know, all of the uh, the, the bourgeoisie. Uh, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, those Negroes, right? They're staying because you know they have sense. They're college educated. I don't, I don't like that narrative at all. It bothers me. Have done in lieu of representing the best interest of working class Americans is they have instead pivoted to identitarianism, mm -hmm. right? The the culture wars, the oh please uh, support us because Republicans bad for minorities. We love minorities. We love black and brown people. We want to protect them. We believe in their dignity. Okay. This is part of the Democratic playbook. It's been this way since the 60s, right? Um, it, it's an old sales tactic. I've, I've alluded to this on other videos, right? First, you uh, you uh, you take away the hope, right? And, and then uh, and then you sell them hope, right? So you knock them in the head, you give them a headache, and then you sell them an aspirin, right? Hey, vote for me. I'm, I can take care of all these problems for you in the neighborhood. See, the Republicans have never been around, right? They're not doing anything for you. You need to continue to vote for Democrats because we have the, the answer to, to help bring you out of poverty with all these social programs. Okay. It's really hard to buy that argument. That argument comes across as incredibly hollow as the United States continues to provide 2,000 pound bombs to the far right government of Israel so they can then proceed to drop said bombs on Arab Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Okay? It's just, it, it rings hollow. It seems like nonsense, you know, superficial campaign tactics that they don't actually believe and don't really uh, do anything to show. I don't watch the Young Turks like that, but you guys let me know in the comments. Did they have the same uh, energy when um, uh, the Palestinians uh, came in and invaded Israel? Uh, you know, did they have the same energy and said that shouldn't have happened, uh, that they shouldn't be doing that? I'm curious to know. You, let me know in the comments. I don't believe they did just listening to the way they sound now. Show or prove that they care about. Yeah, so I think that that's totally uh, right. But going along with that, in terms of things they don't believe, look, part of the blame goes towards Bernie Sanders. Wait, what? Why? Yeah, why? Okay, let me explain. Because Bernie did a great job of convincing Joe Biden that he should run on progressive policies. Because progressive policies are very, very popular on the economic end, okay? So paid family leave, child tax credit, a higher minimum wage, you name it, very popular, right? So Biden ran on him, but Biden didn't tell Bernie something that's very important. He never meant it. 
So when he got into office, he delivered on almost none of those policies. So that is you see over the last three years, every demographic, whether it's age or or race, jumping off a cliff, right? In those uh, in the numbers that Anna's reading you. And I think that what they saw was, hey, oh my God, look at this, this is amazing. We're gonna get all these things that we really, really like. Oh God, Joe Biden and the Democrats, we knew it. And they'd see Trump as a bad guy and the Democrats are good guys. And the Democrats were like, just kidding. And they pulled the football again, no pain. The Democrats have always done that. When have the Democrats ever delivered on anything? Honestly, right? You guys let me know in the comments. Hate family, and they had child tax credit for a year and people loved it. It was one of the most popular uh, programs in the country. And then Biden's like, no, in order to help Joe Manchin and the Republicans, I will now pull the child tax credit, you moron. Because now they had it for a year and they knew how good it was. And then when you take it away from them, it's much worse than if you never gave it to them. So he made all these promises that he knew for sure he was never gonna deliver on. And then all the people on TV turn around and they're like, no, no, it's okay that he didn't do voting rights and he didn't do any of the economic agenda. He did this bill and that bill that helps industries. It maybe helps Americans eventually. But anyway, we love him, so you guys should love him too. And you guys should be thrilled that he did 10% of his agenda. Well, that's nice propaganda, but Definitely propaganda. People see their actual lives. Not only that, I mean, look, I, I think people are really, because again, due to filter bubbles and repeated propaganda, which takes place on both sides. If you're not paying close attention to what's happening in cities like Chicago or New York City when it comes to the migrant crisis and how my- Can we just say illegal immigrants, where did this uh, PC term migrant come from, right? These are people who came across the border illegally. You're supposed to come through the port of entry. These are illegal immigrants. Why are people afraid to say this? Blows my mind. Minority residents of those areas are reacting to it. You're making a huge mistake because they're furious, okay? They are furious. So black and brown voters in Chicago, in New York, they see the crisis, it's at their doorstep. And they're like, I don't understand. This is this is based on federal policy. Why isn't Biden doing anything about it? So when they see their quality of life decline, because suddenly there's a massive influx of people into their city, which they do not have the resources to house, to feed, you know, to keep safe. And when they see the scraps that they're given now being shared with a large, you know, migrant population that's come into their city, they start getting angry. Okay, it's not because they're bad people, it's not because they're racist, it's not because they're anti-immigrant. But you tell me, if 170,000 people in a few months show up to your front door. Oh, now they get it, now they understand. And suddenly you're seeing encampments all over the place and it seems like chaos outside your front door. How are you gonna feel about it? So why, you, t you tell me this then, why didn't anybody care when Texas was saying the same thing? You guys remember when Texas was complaining about this? Texas was complaining about everything that New York and Chicago were complaining about right now. We do not have the resources for this. Everybody called them racist and bigots, right? And uh, xenophobes, right? But now that it's in uh, New York and Chicago and they're forced to deal with it, with it, now it's a problem. You guys see the hypocrisy? Yeah. That's what's happening. And I'm gonna combine two of the things that uh, we've been talking about here, it, because you see this is a perfect storm. The numbers are not moving a little, they're moving a lot and they're moving super quick. Normally numbers take decades to move like this. So there's also the issue of crime. And so, and where did crime hit most? It actually hit black and Latino communities the most. So, because it was mainly in uh, cities mm -hmm. and mainly in working class areas. So as Blacks and Latinos. Y'all remember when they shipped them illegal immigrants up to Martha's Vineyard? They got them out of there quick, didn't they? Right, we're a sanctuary community, but no, they shipped them right on over to those black and brown communities, didn't they? Right, they don't care. They don't care, they just say things. You know, it's heard mainly, if we're being honest, mainly white, older, richer Democrats telling them that they're imagining it and that they were helping black people and Latino people by letting criminals go. That's double the anger. So you're telling me I'm making this stuff up when I got crime all around me, and then you're doing you're saying you're doing it to protect me because I'm black. How does this protecting me? Because and by the way, look at the the assumption there. Let's be honest at the underlying assumption that people that talk in that way have, which is one that is racist. So if you're black, you should like us letting criminals off. Are you nuts? That is, that is not a thing that black people want in this country. Because for 
like privileged elite people in DC, they view people in certain categories. But that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. A black person knows that they don't want bl other black criminals being let off for no reason. They don't want to be harassed. They don't want to be beat up by cops. They don't want to be the victim of injustice. They don't want to be arrested for the same things that white people are not arrested for. But do they want criminals locked up? Of course, those criminals are in their neighborhoods in Chicago and other places. And so as they yell for help, when the Democrats say not only is help not coming, but uh, but we don't even think that it's a real problem mm -hmm. and we're doing it to help you, it's infuriating. And so that's why the numbers are moving so much so quickly. Yeah, look, the Democratic Party is in trouble. They've been in trouble, and their fear tactic. People are leaving the Democratic plantation, and you should too. I'm not saying you have to come over to the Republican Party or you have to be a conservative, but you should definitely broaden your horizons and get yourself educated about the other uh, parties or platforms that are out there uh, that you can start voting for. Because, because clearly, the Democratic Party has failed. Uh, the black and brown community, right? Uh, they haven't done anything for us. And honestly, I don't really think you should be looking to a party to really do anything for you per se. But uh, if there's a you know a platform out there that says, hey, we want to move in this direction and that could uh, benefit the community as a whole uh, to start you know giving out some uh, different opportunities, then you know go check them out. At least give those platforms an opportunity to hear what they have to say rather than holding on to the failed dream that the Democratic Party is going to do anything for you because clearly they haven't since the 60s. They're, they're not doing anything in regard to the right wing has worked for them to some extent so far. I don't I don't know how it's gonna play out for them um, in the general election. But if they think vote shaming, pressuring and fear mongering is gonna be like their only tactics and they're gonna win every time by using those tactics, I think they're mistaken. They need to provide something that people are gonna wanna vote in favor of. And we haven't been seeing that from Democrats. I mean, think about the last general election, Jank, 2020. Why did people vote for Biden in 20? You think people were excited about Biden in 2020? No, everyone held their noses and were like, okay, we just really don't want another four years of this Trump guy. Okay, he bungled the response to COVID. We don't want this chaos anymore. We want some stability. So let's vote for the geriatric guy who's too old to run for president, but he promised. He promised he wasn't gonna run for reelection. But that was a lie, wasn't it? Yeah, so I gotta add last two quick things. So one is, the Democrats constantly telling minority voters that they have to vote for them is grating on everyone's nerve. I can't take it anymore. But be, but Washington, don't you feel disrespected for a, a, a party for the Democratic Party to just assume that you're going to vote for them? Huh, Auntie? Huh, Unc? Come on now, right? They're just assuming you're going to vote for them blindly, because all they got to say is actually all they have to do is get you emotional, right? All they got to do is call the other side racist. Right, and you believe it, you fall for it. Come on, Auntie. Come on, Uncle. Don't don't fall for it anymore. Right? Uh, do some research. Stop being emotional. Get educated. Go find something else. Right? There's the independent independent party out there. There's the Green Party out there. Libertarian Party out there. There's Republican Party out there. So many other parties that you could be looking at, but you stuck on the plantation. Leave. It's okay. Washington doesn't get it because they only do culture wars. They only do identity politics. So as Black people and Latinos keep hearing over and over again, you have to vote for Joe Biden. It's getting under their skin, and I can tell you from my ethnicity. Uh, I'll yeah, that's right. Because if you if you have a problem figuring out for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Remember that? That was insulting, man. I felt disrespected when he said that. I don't. I, you let me know how you felt, but I, I was disrespected when he said that. I'm Muslim American, and I've talked to now hundreds of Muslims across the country, if not thousands. And every time the Democrats say you have to vote for Joe Biden, as Joe Biden is perpetuating. Uh, genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza, every one of them thinks, well, let's find out. F around and find out and see if I have to vote for Joe Biden and have to vote for Democrats. And that's what a lot of people are play, is thinking, because you're not helping us. All you're doing is saying, we have to help you, but you never deliver, you never deliver. And this is the chick is coming home to roost for the, the corporate Democrats. The corporate Democrats have been tricking you for the last 40, 50 years, pretending they're gonna do something for you. And they give you the crumbs off their table that the corporate donors allowed for. And then they think, oh, it's never gonna catch up. We're gonna have Joe Scarborough, mainstream media, New York Times <laughs> make up nonsense propaganda and marketing for us. And we'll just trick everybody into voting for our corporate agenda. Well, it's not working anymore. And that's why people feel so hopeful. All right, crew, we just got finished looking at that. And uh, 
Man, what I have to say about that is uh, we're at a crossroads. I mean, do you feel the political landscape shifting or is this all just smoke and mirrors? And here's the kicker though. Do you believe these political parties truly represent your voice? Pour your hearts out in the comment section below and let's keep the conversation going. Folks, if you enjoyed this content and you wanna see more like it, make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm just gonna thank you in advance for checking out my other videos. So until the next one, I guess I'll catch you in the comments. I'm gone.